Going to number 10, we have up close and personal with Area 51. In September 2017, YouTube channel UFO Seekers did just that. They sought UFOs. What did they find? Well, you will see. Tim Lee and Tracy Doyle hiked up Tickaboo Peak, a 1.4 mile high mountain 25 miles opposite the military base. The duo used telescopic lenses to get the clearest possible photos of the secret base ever taken from outside by just a civilian. Although you can't see little aliens running around or anything, there are plenty of vehicles to be seen, plus an expansive building and water towers. It isn't too scary, but the video is super interesting how they got there and everything, and actually it's quite tense. Had they been caught by authorities taking long lens images, then they really could have been in trouble. The video is 18 minutes long, but here is a clip of the YouTubers finding the base. The video has had over 2.4 million views. Perhaps the Kyles are watching it to swat up for their attack planned on the 20th of September. Kyles. Moving on to number nine now, we have Bud Dwyer. He was a politician and treasurer for Pennsylvania who was exposed for receiving money from a computer technology company so that he would steer a government contract in their favor. He faced a sentence of up to 55 years in prison and a $300,000 fine. He arranged a news conference with dozens of reporters attending, although they were not told what the purpose of it was. Many expected him to just resign, but the reality was much more shocking. After a 30 minute speech, Dwyer produced a magnum revolver. That's the moment this picture was taken as Dwyer tried to warn reporters to not intervene. Before they could, Dwyer put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger, killing himself instantly. Most media outlets chose to not show the full footage, and many newspapers just posted this now famous image. Moving on to number eight now, we have the Cooper family photo. This is a fairly famous one that many of you guys may have seen. I know I've talked about it somewhere. The story goes that in the 1950s, the Cooper family of Texas bought an old house and moved into it. On their first night there, they took a photo of the mum and grandma posing with two kids at the dining room table. When they developed the picture though, this is what they saw. Some sort of dark body was falling from the ceiling behind them. People have been trying to figure out what's going on with this picture ever since it first started circulating online in about 2009. Others have said that the picture is a complete fake due to the lack of information about it and also clues that it's been photoshopped. Still a scary one either way. Coming in at number seven now, we have the schoolboy. This one was shared by Reddit user in the Lion's Mane. He said he comes from a small rural town near some mountains. One day, an old school was being torn down. A family friend went there and he took this picture with his phone. He didn't see the boy standing there until later on. The whole family was freaked out beyond belief. Standing right there was what looked like the actual spirit of a little boy. His face was clearly defined, but his body began to fade around his torso until his legs just tapered away. What do you guys make of this one? Is this a former student rising up to say a last goodbye before his old school disappears forever? Next to number six now, we have John Torrington. He was a British officer who took part in an Arctic expedition in 1846, but died of pneumonia aged 22. Nobody knew what happened to the crew until some of their graves were found on a remote Canadian island. In the 1980s, scientists dug through almost five feet of permafrost until they hit a coffin. They opened it up and this was staring back at them, the body of John Torrington, quite literally frozen in time. The eyes were open, still bright and blue. His skin was battered and bruised, but barely decomposed. The Arctic climate had acted like a perfect freezer. Scientists took samples to study and then buried his body as they found it, where it could still look the same to this day. We have the demon. This one has been circulating online for a number of years now, but the origins of it are a bit of a mystery. It was taken in a hospital room shortly before a patient died. You can just about make out the patient lying in the bed, but the most shocking thing is what's standing on the bed. Some sort of demonic figure hunched over with huge twisted limbs. Many who have shared the picture claim that it's not just some sort of demonic like figure, they say it's an actual picture of a demon caught tormenting a patient and trying to take them to hell in the last few hours of their life. Next up at number four now, we have the Amityville ghost. This photo was allegedly taken inside the famous Amityville house in 1976. That house was the site of a brutal murder of a family and many paranormal investigators have been drawn to it ever since. It features what appears to be 
a young boy peeking out of a doorway. The picture was taken by an automatic camera that took infrared pictures to capture the second floor landing during the night. This picture of the Amityville ghost boy has left some speculating that it could be the ghost of the murdered child of the family, John DeFeo, who had lived in the house with his family prior to the current occupants. Others say this is an accidental picture taken of one of the investigators, but it certainly looks like a little boy to me. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the Grand Canyon. This picture was posted to Reddit by user Zombie Gaddafi. He said it was a photograph of his uncle at the Grand Canyon. At first glance, it looks like a normal picture, that is until you notice the hooded man standing in the bushes. Neither the photographer or the uncle noticed the man standing there. In fact, they swear there was nobody else even in the area, leading many to believe that the explanation for this appearance must belong to the paranormal. Coming in at number 2 now, we have the Phoenix Lights. In 1997, thousands of people witnessed floating lights all over the city of Phoenix. This was the famous event that really hasn't had much press ever since. Witnesses claim to have observed a huge arrow shaped UFO containing 5 spherical lights or possibly light emitting engines on. Even the governor of the time who saw the lights described them as otherworldly. One UFO advocate claimed to have performed a spectral analysis of the photographs that apparently proved the lights could not have been produced by a man made source. Explanations since have ranged from military flares to atmospheric conditions and yes, of course, visitors from another planet. What do you make of them? And finally, number one now, we have Jeremy Bentham. He was an English philosopher known as the founder of modern utilitarianism. When he died in 1932, he left his body to science and then for it to be permanently preserved for display. It all went well except for his head. The story goes that the taxidermy process left his face looking horrifying after a while. As it was on display and the authorities didn't want to alarm people, his head was replaced with a wax substitute. For some reason though, they decided to put his real head on on the floor between his own legs. This is a sight that visitors saw on their arrival before people realised that it's probably best to just store the scary looking head someplace else. Alright and finally I'm going to do a bonus one now because I actually had too many if you can believe it. This one is called Combustion. This is a shocking image from December 1966. It's the remains of the body of 92 year old Dr. J. Irving Bentley. He was discovered in his Pennsylvania home by someone who was coming to read the meter. This is the scene they found. All that was left was Dr. Bentley's leg and slippered foot. The rest of him had been burned to ashes from an unknown internal chemical reaction. In the years since, many have held this picture up as a prime example of spontaneous combustion, a mysterious event in which some people seem to explode and burn on the spot for seemingly no reason at all. Maybe you have the explanation for this one though, I'd love to know. Number 10, Mount Pony. In 1969, the Federal Reserve built a 400 foot long bunker in Virginia with steel reinforced concrete over a foot thick. It is also covered by multiple feet of dirt and surrounded by fences and guard posts. The computers within the facility are the central node for all American electric money transfers. Until the 1990s, it also served as an extra government facility. For many years after its creation, it stored around $1 billion to rebuild the American economy if it ever fell to a nuclear attack. Currently, it stores the archive of movies from the library of Congress, but because of it being hardened against nuclear attack, many people believe that the facility is sitting ready to be used in a time of need. The government tries to prevent any photos of the facility being placed online, as having the layout of the facility become public knowledge would remove any secrecy and advantage in the future. Only a few photos of it can be found online and they honestly look straight out of the back rooms. Coming in at number 9, we have even closer, if you can imagine it. This is one of the closest ever images taken of Area 51. It was taken from a light aircraft and is in the Nevada Aerospace Hall of Fame right now. Here we can see a much closer overview of the whole compound, something that would have been classified just a few years ago. Coming into number 8, we have the airstrip. In 2013, some documents about Area 51 were declassified, although many criticised the response to the Freedom of Information request to having been underwhelming, featuring heavily redacted information. Nonetheless, in 2016, the US did permit Google Earth to photograph the area, which had previously been a no-fly zone. Now you too can view the facility from a bird's eye view. You can check it out and see what's going on, although from 
very high in the sky. From browsing Google around 12 miles north of Area 51, there seems to be an unexplained airstrip coming in at around one mile long. There is also a visible cluster of buildings at the end of the strip, which is kind of baffling. We've got no idea what's being tested here. According to intel from the website Life Science, though, it's thought that the space could be used to test reconnaissance drones. Coming into number seven, we have the Paradise Trailers. Area 51 used to be colloquially known as Paradise Ranch in order to make it sound more appealing to families of workers. I suppose it's a lot to ask a person to relocate to the middle of the desert, so why not rebrand the place Paradise and make it sound more appealing? An image has been released of the Paradise era showing a number of trailers at the facility. Is this where families lived, or was it home to aliens? It's kind of cool seeing how things used to be in its heyday, assuming its heyday is over. We just don't know. All right, coming into number six, this is the big one. It is the alien autopsy. The alien autopsy was reportedly shot in Area 51 and depicts the aliens that were transported to the facility from Roswell after the 1947 crash. The crash was said to have been of a flying disc UFO and was said to have contained wounded aliens. The video was released in 1995 by Ray Santilli, who said that the footage had been supplied to him by a former military camera technician who wanted to remain anonymous, obviously. Let's have a little look at the footage, shall we? Um, I mean, that is a dead alien right there, right? But like, is it? The footage absolutely blew up in 1995, but people were quick to call it a fraud. In the end, Santilli claimed that yeah, only part of the footage was real. He said that only a few frames from the original footage were there, but they were there. He also said the rest had been replicated and was a reconstruction of footage he had had, but was damaged. Sounds likely. Coming into number five, we have the Roswell Rescue. Footage claiming to be from the Roswell fallout surfaced on the internet in 2015 and alleges to show agents holding a Alien corpses and taking them on a stretcher. Have a little look. I don't know, it kind of looks a bit sketchy, right? Can we get another look? Hmm, I guess it was 1947, so we can't expect too much film wise, but I'm not sure this is quite the smoking gun we were looking for. The video has had around 160,000 views on YouTube, but the like to dislike ratio suggests that some people may not be too convinced as to its authenticity. One of my favorite comments on the video comes from Mr. Saturday Night Special, who wrote, This has to be real. Everyone knows when you travel across the universe, you don't wear clothes. Just ask Chewbacca. He'll tell you. You're right. You know what? Are we the only species that like to cover our modesty? All of these aliens crashing, like, where are their little alien suits? Come on. Coming into number four, we have Kodak confirms, allegedly anyway. In 2014, a UFO expert, sorry, a UFO expert, Tom Carey, was sent images from a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but claimed that she had worked with the Secret Service. The image was reportedly taken at Area 51 following the Roswell crash and seems to show a bug-like alien. Let's have a look, shall we? The image seems to support what a number of people who used to work at the Area 51 have said about the facility, including Robert Lazar and staff members from the esteemed Lockheed Martin firm. But like seriously, come on, is this an actual image of an alien? Can we trust anything in the age of Photoshop? It seems that Carrie thought of that and sent the image to Kodak themselves, who were able to confirm that it was taken in 1947. Again. Allegedly. If they sent him a letter saying this, then I haven't seen it. When speaking to the press, Carey said, What's interesting is, is that the film is dated in 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it. And he said that yes, this film strip and the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. From the emulsion on the image, it's not something like spin Photoshop today. If Kodak, did call this authentic? I haven't seen any certification. Coming into number three, we have another alien, of course. In 2012, Chicago videographer Adam Dew received a call from his former business partner Joseph Beeson. He claimed that he had something to show him, and boy did he. Beeson had a private disposal unit sister, and she'd come across a box of photographs that seemed to have been taken by someone close to President Eisenhower. He was in a number of the images himself, as were Bing Crosby and 
and Clark Gable. Two of the images she had been tasked with disposing were absolutely outrageous. Get a load of them for yourself. That's right, it is a small withered brown body of an alien in a glass case. And this was all among the images of the president, which is pretty crazy. The images were found in the garage of a woman named Hilda Blair Ray near Sedona in Arizona. Now, the pair did believe that the images were linked to Area 51 and Roswell. They sent the images to none other than Tom Carey. Tom once again believed that the images looked just like what witnesses had described in the Roswell crash. Let's have another look, shall we? It really does kind of look like an alien wrapped in some kind of cloth, but unfortunately for Tom Carey, the image turned out to be of a mummified corpse of an Aztec child and not a secret leak from Area 51. Our final two, I have to say, are pretty convincing. It's not alien stuff, but I do think that these are secret pictures from Area 51. Coming into number two, we have the strange plane. Here's an image of something that looks like a strange aircraft, or something reportedly taken at Area 51 anyway. It is known that the United States Air Force is present at the facility, and several spy planes have been developed there, including the U 2 spy plane and the SR 71 Blackbird, and possibly others like the rumored Aurora project. So, so, what is the plane in this image? I don't actually know. Could it be one of the alien aircraft that allegedly whistleblower Bob Lazar talked about reverse engineering? Or is it another spy plane? Finally, coming into number one, we have an image of a secret plane crash covered up. It seems an A 12 spy plane, possibly the one pictured above, crashed in 1963 after taking off from the secret airbase. The crash happened in Wendover, Utah, when Area 51 pilot Ken Colmer was testing the plane's subsonic engines at low altitude. The pilot ejected from the plane crash, after which he was subjected to hypnosis and doping to make sure that he relayed that the incident and how it occurred honestly and truthfully. Here are the previously classified images of the crash. Now, As you can see, vehicles raced to recover the wreckage, which was extremely sensitive to the United States Air Force. It seems a government sanitation team was deployed to remove all traces of the spy plane. To me, that sounds very, very strange. So too does it that they kept the images of this plane crash a secret for such a long time. Do you think it really was a spy plane that crashed, or given the response, something much more sensitive? Starting off at number 10 now, we have the visitor. This one comes from a Reddit user called Fan and Depressed. They posted this picture with the caption Got a notification from my smart home app in the middle of the night saying, Your doorbell detected a visitor. That's all he put, and that's all that was needed. He posted it to the creepy subreddit, but it has gained over 34,000 upvotes. One of the top comments said, Why are you doing this? because you were home. That's a quote from the movie Strangers, where some twisted home invaders give their reason for terrorizing a woman in her home. It's a great movie, and yeah, it does remind me of this too. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to see this on your phone app in the middle of the night? There was no follow-up story to this. I just hope they were all right. Number nine, made of Harlech. While secret government facilities are one thing, it can be hard to believe that it's illegal to photograph something that you might just stumble upon on an afternoon walk. A plane that was nicknamed the Maid of Harlech crashed off the coast of Wales back in September of 1942. The pilot lost control during a training exercise and the plane crashed, though the pilot did walk away in pretty good shape. The plane is under around 2 meters of water and only becomes visible when the tide conditions are just right. The wreckage has never moved moved in all this time, and while its actual location is kept under wraps, it is in a public area that we assume anybody can access. However, you may find yourself in some legal trouble if you saw it and try to take a photo of it. The Protection of Military Remains Act prevents the location of any military remains being publicly shared, so any photos of the plane that give away its location are quickly removed from the internet and are not allowed to be seen. Number 8. Tiananmen Square While this image is not forbidden for the majority of us to look at, it is forbidden for around one and a half billion people. In 1989, student led demonstrations in support of democracy took place in Tiananmen Square in China, the protesters attempting to stop military movement on the location. The government of China then declared martial law and they used their military alongside massive tanks to run down any protesters that tried to remain in the square. Because of the horrific nature of the event, the Chinese government government has attempted to cover up the fact that the event in 1989 ever happened. Every year on the anniversary, they undertake a massive censorship campaign to ensure that nobody is talking about the event. Many people in the country have no idea that it ever even happened. But we have access to one of the
the most infamous images from the event, a protester standing in front of an advancing tank. While we can view it whenever we like, people in China are strictly punished if they ever even speak of what happened. Number 7. North Korea Similarly to the censorship that takes place in China, North Korea often covers up the reality of what goes on in their country. But while they do hide it from their own citizens, they also hide it from any outsiders who may try to get a peek at how the country operates. Information going in and out of the country is strictly controlled to maintain their image. So if you ever want to visit, you'll probably have a pretty difficult time. Anyone who wants to enter the country must be accompanied by an escort, and you are only allowed to see pre-approved parts of the country, which are typically staged in order to look much better than the reality. While you may be allowed to photograph these areas, photographs of anything else will be destroyed and could land you in pretty serious trouble. The main thing they want to avoid anyone seeing is the major poverty in the country, with most families actually undertaking very hard labor jobs. There are also other rules like how you are not allowed to photograph a statue from behind. So if you do manage to get one of these pictures, you're very lucky and very brave. Number 6. Iranian Missile Launch One of the main things that governments all across the world like to cover up is their military power. They don't want you to know just how much power they're packing until it's already too late. In 2019, the Iranian government was conducting a missile test launch that went terribly wrong. It resulted in a large explosion that destroyed the whole facility they were operating out of. This occurred when tensions between Iran and the rest of the world were at an all time high. So Donald Trump of course tweeted out a satellite image of the testing site. While it may seem like a normal picture, the United States military became furious and wished that the photo had never been released. This is because of just how clear it is. They didn't want people knowing the extent of just how powerful their satellite cameras are. From the image alone, people were able to find out the location and name of the satellite that took the photo. The government attempted to redact the image and prevent any more people from seeing it, but it was on Twitter and it was already too late. Number 5. Area 51 Area 51, the infamous government base in Nevada, was not even publicly confirmed by the government to exist until 2013. Honestly, way more recently than I thought it was. They stated that it was a military testing site, but a majority of the public believe that it's home to aliens and all evidence thereof. Because of the maintained secrecy surrounding the base, you are not allowed to fly in their airspace, and any pictures of the facility are pretty strictly prohibited. However, in 2020, one pilot managed to lie their way into getting the most up close and clear footage of the facility like ever. In 2020, the private pilot named Gabriel managed to gain access to restricted airspace by telling them he just wanted to continue his quick route to the airport, them not knowing he was equipped with his GoPro to capture footage of the secret facility. He states how he didn't see any activity around the base, but we are fortunate enough to have the images that show even more of the base's layout, while the government is probably not too happy about the fact that this footage even exists. Number 4. Ayi Arnagari It is a military base in Greece that they seem fully determined to cover up and prevent anyone from knowing anything about it. While you can use Google Earth to see an aerial image of just about anywhere on the planet, there are a few areas that are blurred from your view, and this military base is one of them. It's located in central Athens, and while you can see the building that surrounds it, the full complex is completely pixelated and blurred out. Basically all images and information about the facility is kept under wraps by the government. Some people believe that it's a military training facility for new recruits, but could also be their military command headquarters. Photos from ground level or of anyone entering or exiting the facility are strictly prohibited. Number 3. Pine Gap The United States government has multiple facilities that are used for collecting and storing secret intelligence. The Pentagon is probably the most well known one. However, how publicly known the Pentagon is could be on purpose to distract from the other intelligence facilities that they're trying to hide from the public. One lesser known one is the Pine Gap Surveillance Facility that is located in Australia, a crucial base for the United States surveillance of Asia. Because of its importance, they do everything they can to prevent any images of the base making it into public hands. This is because they don't want any information of its layout, operations, or abilities to be known by enemy states and the people that they are collecting information on. Unfortunately for them, it is still possible for the public to actually get pretty close to it, so there are a few images that can be found of the outside. Number 2. X 
space plane. The United States military is constantly testing and experimenting with new things, and one of the main things that they have tried to improve in the past is military air travel. Obviously, they wouldn't want any information about these new things to get leaked, with the fear it may end up in enemy hands. One of their most secretive designs ever was the X-37 space plane, and it landed at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the government attempting to prevent any images of this event being leaked. It's an autonomously piloted space plane and was landing there after completing a two year mission in orbit, two of them apparently being in service. While we do have pictures of what it looks like, its purpose and what technology and capabilities it has remains under wraps. Because of how secretive the government has been with this potential new spy plane, the images that we do have of it are pretty rare, and they're not too happy about the fact that we have them. Number 1. Leaked Military Hardware The United States government aren't the only ones who have had leaks of experimental military equipment. The Chinese military also had a similar situation occur, except they accidentally leaked it all on their own. In their magazine titled Modern Ships, they included an image of the new H6N bomber. While it was purposeful to show off the ship, they didn't intend to show off the new design of the large projectile attached to the bottom of it, experts believing it was built to help with China's territory disputes. As soon as they realized what they'd done, the publishers retracted the image, but it was too late and it was already out there. So they tried to claim it was a computer generated error, but more pictures leaked online of the actual jet in operation, matching the image in the magazine. The images hit the internet and they lost all hopes of trying to cover it up. In our number 10 spot we have the Moko Mokai collection. Well, we are starting off strong with a truly scary and disturbing photo. This is a photograph of a man named Major General Horatio Gordon Robley, who had a collection of 35 heads that he stole from the native Maori people. Apparently in New Zealand, there were people called Maori that preserved the heads of fallen people. The heads were chopped off, boiled, smoked, dried in the sun, and then dipped in a shark oil before being displayed like a trophy. Whoa. They are known as the Moko Mokai. Anyways, these heads were robbed by the British when they moved into New Zealand, and this pic is one of the guys who stole them. Honestly, the man feels just as chilling to look at as the heads. Does anyone else agree? It's probably because he's holding something that looks like it could be a sharp object that might have helped in the chopping process. I don't know, could be just me. Next up at number 9 now, we have the mummified captain. This is the disturbing story of Manfred Fritz Bajorat, a German man who was found in his boat by two fishermen off the coast of the Philippines, he was dead. His corpse had been preserved by dry ocean winds, hot temperatures and the salty sea air. It could not be determined how long he had been dead for, but he hadn't been seen by anyone for 7 years. He would actually been sailing the world on his yacht for the past 20 years. It's thought that from the way he was sitting, death was unexpected, perhaps from a heart attack. The police said there was no evidence of a second person aboard, and no weapon was found on board the yacht. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Home. This is a 1948 picture of a girl who grew up in a Nazi concentration camp. Now She was asked to draw what home was, and this is what she drew. The photograph was taken by David Seymour in a home for emotionally disturbed children located in Warsaw. Not much is known about the girl other than her name, Teresa. The swirling lines are a stark reminder of horrors of the Holocaust. More than 1.5 million Jewish children were killed in the Holocaust. Those that survived often ended up like Teresa, lost shocks and unable to grasp a simple concept like home. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Obsession. George Karl Tanzler was a radiology technician from Germany. He moved to Florida where he married Maria de Hoyos, a local Cuban American woman. She died of tuberculosis 5 years later, despite his best efforts to save her. He wouldn't accept her death though. After her funeral, George dug up Maria's body and took her to his home. He attempted to preserve her. This is the picture of his efforts. He attached her bones together with wire and coat hangers and fitted her face with glass eyes. He replaced her skin with silk cloth soaked in wax, he gave her a wig and filled her insides with rags. He covered her in jewellery and the smell was masked with copious amounts of perfume. The body was eventually discovered by authorities a full 9 years after he first removed her from her resting place. Next up at number 6 now we have the catacombs. This is a very disturbing picture. Please look away now if you are sensitive 
relative to death and all that kind of thing. This is a story of Masha, a Ukrainian woman who went out with a large group of friends to celebrate New Year's Eve in 2005. It was a foggy night with temperatures around freezing. The group stumbled into the Odessa Catacombs, an ancient tunnel and cave system that spans for over one and a half thousand miles. Somehow, Masha became separated from her group and got lost in the dark. She seems to have wandered for days with no food or water before slipping into a coma and then death. Her body wasn't discovered for months until this picture was taken by some local boys who found her. Still, she wasn't retrieved by authorities for a further two years. When a story was shared on Reddit, people tried to imagine how terrifying it must be to be lost in the dark like that pitch black darkness, unable to see any difference between your eyes being closed and open and totally alone. Moving on to number five now, we have shell shocked. In World War One, there were hundreds of thousands of soldiers who got shell shock, a type of PTSD brought on from the endless bombardment they had to endure. Tens of thousands of soldiers were treated for the disorder. Victims were said to have a thousand yard stare, looking into the distance as their mind went blank. Here is a famous picture from a soldier during the Battle of the Somme, a battle which killed three million men. This man appears to be suffering from shell shock. He has a crazed look in his eyes that is often associated with those who had shell shock. It's an image that has become increasingly associated with war, especially the hell that was World War One. Next up at number four now, we have the subway. In 2012, the New York Post ran a story with this picture. It was of Ki Suk Han, a 58 year old man who was pushed onto the tracks by a stranger. He was fatally struck by a train seconds later. The suspect was 30 year old Naeem Davis, who confessed to pushing the innocent man onto the tracks. The picture shocked New Yorkers and people around the world. Why was someone taking a picture instead of trying to help? Should the New York Post even have ran that story and published that picture? What do you guys think? Next up at number three now we have Madame Violet. This is a picture of Violet Spears, otherwise known as Madame Violet. She was the leader of a group of real life vampires in Edinburgh in the late 19th century. They were called The Hive. They became known as lovely but dangerous partiers, seducing men and women with drugs and alcohol and then making them donate their blood to them, so to speak. Some of the victims even joined the hive and she became their leader too. In 1882 and 1884, she was apparently voted the scariest woman in England, even though she never left Scotland. That's how scary she is. She scared another country she didn't even live in. Moving on to number two now, we have the vulture and the little girl. On March 26, 1993, the New York Times shared a picture known as Struggling Girl. It showed a famine stricken boy, initially believed to be a girl who had collapsed from malnutrition during a famine in South Sudan. In the background, a vulture waits patiently. These birds have a keen sense of death and this one has its eyes on the boy. The picture shocked the world. The photographer, Kevin Carter, was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his photography. He actually killed himself just four months later. The reasons are largely unknown, but many people speculate that pictures like this can drive anyone down a dark path. And finally, number one now, we have the Hiroshima shadows. When the US dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan's Hiroshima, over 100,000 people were killed. Some of them who were close enough were literally vaporized into thin air. The intense heat of the explosion caused what's now called nuclear shadows. The blast forever change services because of the UV radiation. Services that were blocked by people look different to its surroundings, leaving a sort of permanent shadow of the person who was vaporized. This is one of the most striking images for me. What appears to be an old person stood at the bottom of the steps. You can even see the cane in their hand. It's a shocking reminder of how destructive weapons of war have become, how quickly life can be snuffed out in an instant, leaving only a shadow behind. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the uninvited guest. This is a creepy picture originally posted to Reddit. The user said that everyone in this picture knew each other at the party. All the people you see in the light, well, everyone except for one single person. In case you haven't spotted it yet, take a look at the far right of this picture. There you can see a boy with glowing eyes. He's standing in the shadows and appears almost translucent. The person who took this picture said they posted it to Facebook the next day and asked every single other person in the picture if they knew who that face belonged to. No matter how hard they tried, none of them did. While some of them have chosen to forget the picture altogether, others who were there that night have never been able to forget that boy's face. They believe it's the spirit of a child from years before wanting to get in on the party. Ugh. In our number nine spot, we have the woman in the attic. Well, 
The story behind this picture is extremely chilling, so chilling that I definitely threw on some show tunes and sang for a moment after reading about it. In case you're curious, Wicked is always my musical of choice. Speaking of Wicked, this was not planned, I swear. The woman in this photograph is a real woman who had a wicked mother who locked her in an attic for 25 years. An anonymous tip to the authorities in 1901 was how she was found, 55 pounds in a room filled with feces, old meat, and insects. Thankfully, she was okay health-wise, but mentally, as you can expect, not so much. This is a photo of her and how she was found. Truly horrible to see. While nothing while looking at this photograph and seeing her long brown hair, I'm now convinced that this is where Disney got some of their inspiration for the movie Tangled. There are way too many similarities that I'm sure they took and made a thousand times more light and cheery. In our number eight spot, we have for sale. This is a photograph from 1948 that honestly at first glance, I thought it to be some kind of joke. Maybe the young ones in the photograph were being bad and the mom was threatening to sell them. You know, the old tricks parents would play when children's age wasn't a phone call away. Anyways, apparently this is a picture of something very real that was happening due to poverty at the time and that instantly makes the picture chilling and sad. Apparently the mother and father of these young ones, Mr. and Mrs. Chalifo, needed money desperately and so they sold them. It was said that the mother was paid to stage this photo and perhaps that is why there is an air of phoniness to it, but no later than two years after all of their young ones had been sold to families. In our number seven spot, we have On the Brink of Death. A man by the name of Robert Overacker decided that he wanted to raise awareness for the homeless. And how was he going to do it? Oh, by doing a stunt that would attract the masses. He was going to jet ski over Niagara Falls. And this is a picture of him doing just that. This was the last picture of him taken as he fell to his death as his parachute did not open as planned. Apparently one of the police officers at the Niagara area has said that it would have been like hitting cement as he fell 180 feet. Wow. What a haunting photo to look at. He was only 39 as well. This is why I will never skydive because, well, there isn't a 100% survival rate, so there's that. Also. I'm a chicken, so there's also that. In our number six, we have the two-headed dog. I always feel like puking when I see this photo. It is just the most inhumane thing ever, and it makes my heart hurt to look at. This is a photo that was taken in the 50s of the Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikov and his science experiment, the two-headed dog. He beheaded the head off of one of the dogs and attached it to the other dog. He sewed their circulatory systems together and connected their vertebrae with plastic strings, and after the surgery was completed, both of the heads could hear, see, smell, and act as a normal dog would. The dog survived only four days before passing away. This scientist's research led to the creation of transplants, but wow, was this a horrible thing to have done. Also, he apparently only did this experiment due to boredom, so perhaps my anger stems from having learned that. In our number five spot, we have Mary Reeser. This is a picture of a blown up Mary Reeser. This picture showcased quite the story from its time. On July the 2nd of 1951 in St. Petersburg, Florida, a woman by the name of Mary Reeser somehow caught fire and all that remained was a part of her skull and her left leg surrounded by her ashes. She was discovered by her landlady and after the investigation, the police were unable to say as to how she could have possibly caught fire. It was this story where the idea of spontaneous human combustion was theorized, but scientists today say that they are almost certain that this could not be the case. But what is weird is that most of her house was largely devoid of fire damage, so it makes no sense. I suppose we shall never know and this picture will continue to scare us till the end of time. In our number four spot, we have the truck stop killer. In the 70s, there was a killer by the name of Robert Ben Rhodes who would pick up while he was driving his commercial truck across America, and then he would kill them. He was suspected to have taken the life of over 50 women. Anyways, when he was finally caught, a picture of a named Regina K. Walters was found along with many other photos of women inside Robert's home. This photo is believed to be taken right before he Regina. 
Man, oh man, how horrible. This is quite chilling to look at. Sometimes I'm so surprised when evidence like this is leaked to the public. This must have been haunting for her family and friends to see. In our number three spot, we have the Radium Girls. This is another chilling photo of a girl that was a part of the Radium Girls, which were a number of women known for working at factories in the 20s where they were exposed to so much radium that they actually would come home glowing in the dark. Unfortunately, the prolonged exposure caused them to have a series of problems such as their jaws began to swell up and fell off, their vertebrae would collapse, and eventually they passed of cancer. So knowing that this is a pic of one of those women makes this picture so much worse than it looks. However, it does already look like a scary picture of a woman in pain. Pretty scary to think about the amount of people working in factories today or working with technology that might bring about future death that we haven't been able to predict yet. In our number two spot, we have Annalise Michel. Yeah, this picture will definitely give you the heebie-jeebies even without knowing the backstory. But what if I told you that this is a pic of a woman that was believed to be possessed by the devil? Yeah. This photo just got a hundred times scarier, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, this is a photo of a young lady by the name of Annalise, and she was a pretty devout Catholic German and grew up in the 60s. She was completely normal until she suddenly started hallucinating, eating spiders, routinely convulsing, and oh, just drinking her own urine. She claimed that the devil was possessing her, and she would later go on to have 67 exorcisms. Nothing worked, and she ended up passing away from malnutrition at the age of 23. Her tale is what inspired the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yep, deeply chilling. In our number one spot, we have The Pioneer's Defense. Save the best for last. This is probably one of the creepiest photos that I have ever seen. This is a historical image taken by the Russian photographer Viktor Bula in 1937. If it isn't creepy enough without the explanation, Here's the explanation. These are people that were part of a Soviet youth group called the Young Pioneers, and they are wearing gas masks because they were in the middle of a military preparation drill, as this was during a time when Joseph Stalin was the dictator, and no one knew if death was around the corner. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Hampton Court Palace Ghost. In December 2003, security cameras at Hampton Court Palace in England had a problem with a fire door that just kept opening when nobody else was around. They decided to check the security tapes, and to their absolute horror, these are the images they saw. Some sort of skeletal figure opening the doors before retreating back inside. A spokesperson for the palace assured the public that this was not a joke, and they have not manufactured these pictures, saying they genuinely do not know who or what it is. Moving on now to number 9, we have Pogo the Clown. Now, For many people, this picture by itself may be terrifying enough. It's a picture taken of Pogo the Clown, taken sometime in the 1970s. Even for an old picture, there's something not quite right about it. People just feel uncomfortable when they view it, and there may be a very good reason for that. The man behind the clown makeup is actually John Wayne Gacy, one of America's most notorious serial killers. During the 1970s in Chicago, he lured 14 young men and boys to his home and tortured them before killing them. He hid their bodies in the crawl space of his own home, where he lived with his wife and two children. They had no idea what was going on. By day, though, he was Pogo the Clown, appearing at local children's parties to entertain them or potentially even scope them out. He was so popular that he even met the mayor, who thanked him for all the joy that he spread. In 1994, he was sentenced to death by lethal injection. One of his final quotes from an interview was simply, The dead won't bother you, it's the living you have to worry about. Moving on now to number 8, we have Telling Grandin. That's the name of the old scrapbook where this picture comes from. Its 28 pages contain photographs collected by an Evanston, Illinois group during a visit by train to the New Orleans Carnival of 1903. Perhaps in person and viewed in the context of their own time, this picture of a woman in a dress and a mask would seem entertaining, I guess. Many people these days, though, feel quite the opposite about it. Some have described it as very disturbing, creepy, and deeply unsettling. It's been over a hundred years since this picture of a carnival goer was taken, and yet the picture has found its way into many lists like this and keeps people coming back to study it and examine why exactly it's so very creepy. For me, though, it's those eyes, or rather, lack of eyes. What do you 
you guys think. Moving on to number seven now, we have Omar. Of all the pictures in this video, I don't know many that seem as unassuming as this one when you first look at it. This is a picture taken in the town of Omar, Northern Ireland. It was taken on the 15th of August, 1998, a day that would go down in history. Nobody in this picture knew that the red Vauxhall car parked right there actually contained a bomb inside. It was placed there by a splinter group of the IRA who opposed the ceasefire that ended the troubles in Northern Ireland a year before. They had phoned the police to tell them about the bomb so that they could move people away. Warnings were inaccurate though, and police had inadvertently moved people towards that red car with the bomb in. Moments after this picture was taken, the 500 pound bomb went off. 29 people were killed, over 200 were injured. Incredibly, the man and the child in the foreground of this picture survived, but the person who took the picture was killed. Next up on number six now, we have gas mask. There are rumors that this creepy picture comes from a small Japanese island where locals are forced to wear gas masks to protect themselves from the toxic fumes of a nearby volcano. In reality though, it appears to be a picture showing members of the Young Pioneers Youth Group in Soviet Russia donning their gas masks during a civil defense drill near Leningrad in 1937. The government ran group took this picture as a sign of strength meant to show the whole world the efficiency and preparedness of the youth organization. For many people though, it's just a haunting image of faceless children staring you down. Coming in number five now, we have Tyler Hadley. I find this picture very disturbing. Again, it's one of those pictures that needs the backstory for you to truly understand how dark it is. The guy on the right is Tyler Hadley, age 17 at the time. He had sent a text out to his friends earlier that night, inviting them to a party at his family home in Port St. Lucie, Florida. He finished off the text by saying, don't worry, parents won't be here. That sentence is incredibly scary when you learn that Hadley had just beaten his own parents to death with a craw hammer in their own bedroom. He then partied with his friends on the ground floor of the house. None of them had any idea what had happened. One of them actually took this now infamous picture with Hadley himself. He then told one of his friends what he had done. The friend found the bloody bodies in the bedroom and called the police. Tyler was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Moving on to number four now, we have ectoplasm. This picture is said to be from a medium in a trance while contacting the dead. The strange substance streaming across the picture is allegedly ectoplasm. For many years, photos like this were quite common, claiming to show ectoplasm oozing from orifices in the medium's body. They claim that spiritual entities drape this substance over their non-physical body, enabling them to interact in the physical and real universe. Among modern day believers though, this picture has become famous due to its mysterious origins. Nobody is quite sure who the onlooker is. Nobody knows who the spiritual medium is. Some people even speculate that they are not a willing participant in this, that they do not want to enter into the trance and speak to the dead. Either way, the striking picture is enough to jog anyone's imagination. Next up number three now, we have the hidden mother. This is a picture of a very common practice back in Victorian times. Back then, early cameras had slow exposure times. They required the subject to stay still for a long period of time. Obviously, this is very difficult to do with children. They rarely sit still. If the family wanted to have a picture of just the children, this is what they would do, the hidden mother trick. The photographer would cover the mother in a shawl so they could sit there and hold their child still. It was a popular technique at the time, but it's left us with many creepy pictures like this. Moving on to number two now, we have Travis Alexander. This is the last ever picture taken of Travis Alexander. It was taken by his ex-girlfriend Jodie Arias while he showered. Moments after the picture was taken, she stabbed him nearly 30 times, severing his jugular vein. She then shot him in the head with a shotgun. A medical examiner later determined that he was likely already dead before the gunshot wound was inflicted. This had come after she had stalked him, accessed his Facebook account, and slashed his car tires. Some people have said that by zooming in on Travis's eye, you can actually see Jodie Arias before she attacked. She was charged with first degree murder in 2013 and sentenced to life in prison. And finally number one now, we have the vampire heart. This is the mummified heart of an alleged vampire called August de la Grange. He was said to be responsible for the deaths of more than 40 people in the early 1900s in Louisiana. The victims were all found dismembered in their own homes. One thing the crime scenes all had in common was the distinct lack of blood present at the scene. After police efforts to catch the murderer yielded no results, locals began to believe that the murderer was actually 
actually a vampire. A local Catholic priest called Father Henry Yante took it upon himself to bring an end to these murders. During his investigation, he claims to have met minions of the vampire who confessed that Auguste de la Grange was the head vampire. The priest confronted him in his home and drove a wooden stake through his heart. Today, his skeleton and heart can be seen at the Vampire Museum in New Orleans. Mm -hmm.